Hello and welcome to the Celtic View podcast, the official podcast of Celtic Football Club. I'm Joe Donnelly and I'm joined today by the Celtic FC women's side's magnificent number seven, it's Mariah Lee. Mariah, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Um, so we're speaking today ahead of what's quite a big fixture for you yeah. guys. It's the second Glasgow derby in just over a month. I believe the last game was the 21st, so it was a month ago. Um, on the 23rd, when, when you guys play, it'll have been uh, just over a month. We'll speak about the fixture, which is coming up, and we'll look back to, to the, the fixtures past as well. Um, but if we look about, if you look at the form of the Celtic women's side recently, nine games uh, unbeaten in all nine of those, eight wins, and of course that goalless draw against Glasgow City recently, you guys are doing pretty well at the moment. Yeah, um, we're happy. Um, nine games unbeaten, pretty good. Uh, we'd love to continue that. And so we're just trying to take it one game at a time and um, just use this momentum to build. Yeah, and it's something which, you know, rightly it comes out of, of the mouth of every player in Fran Alonso as well about playing game to game. It's certainly uh, an outlook and an approach which is which is working for you guys. And when um, when Paul, uh, my boss at the Celtic View, spoke to Caitlin Hayes recently, spoke about coming back from the lockdowns. Obviously, the season's been quite stop-start because of, of the current restrictions. And, of course, you guys had that game against Glasgow City. But as opposed to letting your heads go down with a defeat, you go in this fantastic run. And it really speaks to how focused you guys are and the fact that you are playing game to game. Yeah, yeah. Focus. Also, just building chemistry. Um, that was my first game, Jazz's first game, Anna's first game, Izzy's first game. So really just getting to know each other, getting familiar and um, finding those connections has definitely helped us uh, post that uh, one game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And again, big derby, uh, big derby on Sunday for you guys. You, of course, had quite a big impact on the last one, of course, getting that match winner. Um, well deserved, in fact, the fact that it ended up 1-0 is probably not a fair reflection of the game. I thought Celtic controlled the game for long spells, but nevertheless, you know, you take a win as it comes. Uh, I know that you've been asked loads about the, the goal and the game itself since, rightly so, um, but now that it's been a month, now that the dust has settled, how are you reflecting on that? Have you had time to digest it yet? Does it still seem unreal? I mean, what are your thoughts now about a month on? Um, I mean, it still seems kind of unreal, but um, it was it was just a great goal. Um, and playing in Celtic Park still awesome. Um, and I hope we can play there again. I hope we can, you know, beat Rangers again. And um, all of those feelings are still close to home. Like I, you know, that's a great first goal for me. Um, and I'm always going to remember that for sure. Yeah. Amazing. It's one. It's one which I don't think you would you, would, you could forget even if you tried. <laughs> and I mean, having watched a lot of of, um, of Fran Alonso's side since you know since Fran came in a couple of years back, something which seems um, really at the forefront of his tactics is build up play. You know, he likes to build out from the back. He likes to pass. It's all about retaining the ball and pressing the game high. And of course, your goal against Rangers was different. It was, you know, a route one ball. It's a long ball. You kind of identified that the game was opening up, that legs were getting tired, and you really capitalised on that moment. And just to kind of feed into what you said before about the players starting to understand each other more with every with every game that you play, in those moments where you do see the game getting stretched and you're understanding each other's movements, do you feel that as you go? I mean, you've kind of said that, that the unity is building on the pitch that you're able to change tactics on the fly, not necessarily getting the word from the sidelines, but you know where each player is going to be. Do you find that yourself? Yeah, I think um, it's a bit of um, kind of having an idea of what players like to do um, and like where they like the ball. So like on that counter attack, I just wanted it in behind because there was so much space and Chloe played that great ball. Um, but since that, I've been able to get in behind more, um, which hasn't been something that we've been doing a lot, because like you said, we like to play and build, but if we can exploit them, if they're high and they're spacing behind, like I can do that. Um, and so just kind of finding other ways to score goals and to beat your opponent and I'm um, getting creative. So I definitely think um, the more we play, the more we're able to connect with each other. Yeah. 
And I mean, you stole the headlines um, on the day, which, you know, is, is perfectly you know, how it should be. It was a great goal. It was a great way to win the game. What did you say to Chloe afterwards? She must have been delighted with that pass. As yeah, well. I was just like, awesome pass. <laughs> <laughs> There's some great photos, you know, in, in the kind of aftermath of that goal of you guys lined up and everybody's got their arms around each other. Um, I think it's, uh, I forget who it is, but someone's jumping on someone's shoulders and it's really, really captures yeah. that moment for you guys that, um, I mean, it was still 10 minutes to go in the game, but it really <laughs> felt like you, you'd earned that goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was just like pure emotion, all of us coming together and being excited. I think it was Craigie. I think she jumped up on somebody. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so it was it was just fun. Yeah, and you said there about, you mentioned about scoring at Celtic Park, which is any Celtic fan and any football player's dream. You've mm -hmm. obviously managed to achieve that. And I know that you've spoken a lot about yourself and what it means to you and something you'll never forget, but what were your family saying about that, you know, given that chance to seize the opportunity and obviously, you know, leave Celtic Park, not only having scored, but scored the match winner against Rangers? Yeah, my family is just really excited. They're really proud of me. Um, and um, they're just like, nice work. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. I know that um, I watched an interview with yourself with my colleague uh, Dalen Doherty. You did the training just after that game and you spoke about, um, well, he asked you, did that game and that goal help you appreciate the size of Celtic? I know a lot of players, you know, they know that Celtic are a big club, but it's once you come here, once you play, once you play in front of the fans. And I know you said you'd had a lot of attention on social media. Does that give you an extra boost as a player that you know that the fans are watching, paying attention and, of course, ready to praise you when you do do well? Yeah. Um... Because you kind of, like you said, you hear about Celtic and like the magnitude of the club, but then once you get here, that's when it hits. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized how just gung ho and how convicted and um, uh, just how much the fans just love the program and love us. And I've gotten a lot of um, like good luck messages and welcome message and then congratulation messages and so many people just saying that made their week um or what have you so it definitely feels different when you're here and it's just something i really never expected i just never expected this much of um just engagement yeah i think just to go over your stats you can correct me if i've got any of this wrong but i mean since that goal against rangers there's obviously the goal against rangers two against four for farmington another against spartans have i missed any there no, I think it's, that's it. Mm -hmm. that's, I mean, it's, it's a fantastic record, all within the space of a month. And we speak so much collectively about the team. And I know that, you know, you can't perform without the help of your teammates. But I mean, individually, that's a really good record for yourself as well. It must be a great feeling at the moment. Yeah, um, getting goals. And I've got some assists there. And some I drew some PKs. So those are all things that help the team win. So um, that's just my my goal at the end of the day is what can I do to help the team? And um, it always feels good scoring. So um, I just hope I can keep continuing this run and um, you know, score again against Rangers. That would just be awesome. I think are you echoing the sentiments of every Celtic fan over the world at the moment. I remember reading that you had uh, you were looking over the kind of the list of players and at Celtic and you, you recognised Sarah Teagarden's name and then you gave her a call just before kind of making the move to Glasgow. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? I remember uh, my agent was like Celtic and then I called T yeah. and um, we had met before because she came back to Wake um, mm. in the fall when I was playing because she's a couple years older. And I was just asking her about her experience and um, how she liked it here. And she just had a lot of positive things to say. And that really sealed the deal for me um, because it's always nice having like an inside perspective, especially from someone who is from America. We have similar experiences. And so um, that was just like the final thing. And so then I signed and came over here. Yeah. And I remember when I was reading that thinking, I wonder if the recommendations over the phone lived up to the real thing. Certainly everything that I've seen you saying recently would suggest that and already on this call. But, you know, did you find that everything she'd said rang true once you arrived? Yeah, rang true. But there's also so many surprises and like I couldn't have anticipated all of the COVID um, delays and all that stuff. So um, there were definitely a lot of anticipation, like while I was here for about a month and a half and we weren't training um i was just waiting and waiting and waiting so once we started playing it's been a lot of fun 
Yeah. And just to kind of touch upon that, I mean, we, we spoke before we started recording about how, you know, you're originally from Seattle. You've also played over in Switzerland. And of course, now you're, you're playing football in Glasgow. Moving, you know, across the world at any time um, is different. It's difficult to settle in and stuff like that. But of course, doing so in COVID times, it must be it must be a real challenge as well on a personal level away from the game. Yeah, it's um, it's challenging, but um, there are pros and cons to playing abroad versus playing in the States, because um, I was with the rain, OL rain before this. Um, and just with COVID too, it's it's different. It's a whole different set of challenges, um, like not having any fans um, and not being able to explore as much as I wanted to with all the shops being closed. Um, but luckily here, everybody speaks English. Um, I, although I can't understand everything, <laughs> but um, at least there's not a language barrier. So that's made the transition easier than um, when I was in Switzerland. So, um, yeah. How have you found the Glaswegian accent? Have you picked up any slang from any of the players? Anything <laughs> you can repeat a, here? <laughs> I picked up a few things. Um, they love to say it's Ralston. That's <laughs> listen. You don't get to say that very often in Glasgow, to be fair. It's normally freezing. <laughs> well, I never say it because I'm like, it's not hot. But they love to say it. Oh my god. Yeah. So looking to the next game, which of course is Rangers. Um, the last game, it really couldn't have went better, like we've already spoken about in this conversation. I guess you guys will be expecting a different game. This is the first of the final four and the, the, the kind of final stretch of the campaign. It's very tight for that, that top two spot, as you guys are well aware of. And Rangers will be doing everything they can to win the game as well. What do you expect from, from Sunday's game? Oh, a battle. Um, they're going to be coming for us. Um, you know, we've already beaten them twice, so... Mm -hmm. They're just going to bring everything and we both want that Champions League spot. So I know it's going to be just a grind from start to finish. Um, but those are the games you live for. So yeah. I'm excited. I heard um, Kelly Clark say in her pre-match press conference that, you know, whilst you can't deny the significance of a Glasgow derby and all the history and everything that comes with it, she said with an eye to the four games, you consider all of those must win. Well, you want to win every game when it gets so close to the end of the season, you want to you know, take maximum points from every game that you can. Is it a case of putting the hype aside, you know, or even thriving off the hype? But, you know, regardless of what happens on Sunday, it's you still need to remain laser focused on the games that come after that. Yeah. Um, I love the pressure. So um, the more we put on the game, the more I'm ready to go. Um, but regardless of what happens, we still need all the points we can get because you never know. You never know. We yeah. don't want to um, let anything just slide from us. So we have to make sure we're diligent um, for every match until the season's over. Yeah. And as a relatively new player to the team, of course, whenever you hear Kelly Clark speak, she sounds really inspiring. And of course, she knows she's been at Celtic for a long time. She's a captain. What's it like to, to play and work under her? Oh, it's great. Um, she is very inspiring. She always does our pregame um, talks in the huddle and always has some things that gets us all ready to go and geared up. Um, so, uh, and she assisted me the other day. So I love love her even more for that. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> along with that, yeah, continue fun playing with her. Yep. Like we touched upon about Sunday's game, you know, win, lose or draw, hopefully we get a win. That's that's what we're gunning for. Um, but after Sunday, it's Hibs on Wednesday, then it's back to Sunday. And it's been like that, like we said before recording, you know, it's Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday. I know you said there that you enjoy a challenge, but is that kind of fixture congestion for want of a better term? Is that good for you that you never get to dwell on a result for too long, you know, positive or negative, that you're quickly on to the next and you need to shift your, your mental attitude there? Yeah, mentally, um... I think, you know, those quick pace games are good. Um, Cause like you said, you can um, not dwell on whatever result, either the highs or the lows and just focus on what's next. Physically, you know, it's taxing. Um, so just managing our load, managing our bodies is something that the staff has to take into consideration. Um, and um, we all have to be smart so that we can perform in each game because you know soccer just takes so much out of you especially when you have big games so um it's a challenge but it's something that we can handle yeah 
Well, the games don't come much bigger than uh, Sunday's Glasgow Derby. Listen, Mariah, thank you so much for joining us on the Celtic View podcast. Wish you guys all the very best on Sunday and from there on till the end of the season. Thanks again for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me.